On this worksheet, we're going to be looking at electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions on benzene rings that have two or more substituents already present. When you have two or more substituents on a benzene ring, these substituents are going to work together to control or direct the location of an incoming electrophile. Um, and by work together, sometimes they actually work against each other, but th their um, efforts are combined to control the location of the incoming electrophile. So here's our first example that we're gonna look at. We're gonna be putting a bromine atom on this aromatic molecule. I'm gonna begin by redrawing our reactant molecule over here. Now what we want to do is um, consider the two substituents that are already present on this benzene ring. So we have an NH2 group and we have an NO2 group. And we want to think about um, where does the NH2 group want to put the incoming electrophile and we also separately want to think about where does the NO2 group want to put that incoming electrophile. So we want to consider these substituents one at a time. Like we want to start by just thinking about the NH2 group. We're going to temporarily ignore the NO2 group. Just think about that NH2 group. Remember there are a lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen on the atom directly attached to the ring, which makes it an ortho para director. It wants to put an electrophile in a para position relative to that NH2 group. It also wants to put an electrophile in the ortho position relative to the NH2 group. So these are the two locations that the NH2 group wants to place the bromine. And right now, all we're thinking about is what does the NH2 group want? So I'm gonna put some dots on those carbon atoms because this is where the NH2 group wants our substituent to go. And in fact, I'm also, I'm really gonna color code this. I'm gonna draw the NH2 group in that same color. So we know that the NH2 group is trying to send an electrophile into one of these two positions. So now let's think about the NO2 group and we're gonna temporarily ignore the NH2. We're not gonna think about that one for a minute. The NO2 group has a positive formal charge on that nitrogen, which makes it a meta director. It wants to put electrophiles in a position that is meta to itself. The meta positions relative to the nitro group are here and here, the same places. Um, relative to the nitro group, this is meta and this is meta. So in this situation, both of these substituents want to direct an electrophile to the same spots on the benzene ring. We're going to get two products, just like we normally would in a situation where uh, we have an ortho para situation. Um, we're going to get two products one where it is going ortho to the NH2 group, and the other where it, the uh, bromine is gonna go para to the NH2 group. And both of those are meta to the NO2 group. So we're just gonna add those bromines in those correct spots. There's two products for this reaction. Now it's not always quite this easy. Sometimes multiple substituents are going to compete with each other to control the location of the incoming electrophile. So we're going to look at this example next right here. Um, and I'm going to get begin again by drawing the original reactant. Looks like this. And we're going to consider the existing substituents one at a time starting with the chlorine. The chlorine, because it has a lone pair of electrons directly um, on the atom directly attached to the ring, that makes it an ortho para director. So it wants to put a new electrophile in either one of the ortho positions or in the para position. Well, there's already something in the para position, so it can't put it down there. So our chlorine atom wants to put an incoming electrophile in either one of these ortho spots like that. Now let's consider the OCH3 group. This also has lone pair of electrons on the atom directly attached to the ring, which means it also is an ortho para director. So it wants to put an incoming electrophile in one of the ortho positions or in the para position. Again, there's something in the para position already, so it can't put anything there. It wants to put the electrophile in one of these positions. I'm gonna color code this also. We'll make this one blue. So the OCH3 group, wants to direct an incoming electrophile here. 
So we've got some competition. Um, where is that electrophile going to go? Is it going to go into one of the ortho spots relative to the chlorine? Is it going to go into one of the ortho spots relative to the OCH3 group? When we have a situation like this, one of the things that can help us figure out the actual product of the reaction is now by considering whether our existing substituents are activators or whether they are deactivators. Halogens are deactivators which means that they don't really want to help the ring react. This is due to their electronegativity. Alkoxides are activators. When one of our substituents is an activator, it is going to control the, um, control the, the substitution reaction in general. Because this is the activator, our uh, incoming electrophile is going to be controlled by the OCH3, which means we're going to see it going into these positions or ortho to the OCH3. Both of them are identical to each other, so we could draw our electrophile either to the left or to the right due to the symmetry. I'm going to just draw it over to the left because I have a little bit more room there. And this electrophile that we're adding is SO3H. We're not going to see anything going into these positions up here because the chlorine is deactivating the ring. Here is another example. Um, again, we want to consider each one of these substituents one at a time. And maybe, you know, when we have multiple substituents, maybe what we want to do is just start by thinking about, hey, looking at these substituents, which ones are activators, which ones are deactivators. Maybe I'll use like green for the activators and we'll use this, uh, like red color for the deactivators, like stop sign. So our alkyl group up here on top, that is an activator. Let's make that one green. Our halogen, halogens are deactivators. The nitro group, also a deactivator. So this reaction is going to be controlled by the alkyl group. We don't even really need to consider where these deactivating substituents would want the electrophile to go. We're going to be controlled completely by this alkyl group. Alkyl groups are orthopara directors, which means that this alkyl group, which is controlling the reaction, wants to put a substituent in the ortho position relative to itself. And it also wants to put a substituent in the para position relative to itself. So that would be down here. The electrophile that we're putting onto the ring is a bromine. So let's fill that in so it doesn't look like we have methyls going on there. And also this question wants us to use steric hindrance to predict which will be the major product. So of these two, using steric hindrance, which would be the major product? This al alkyl group is definitely the bulkiest substituent, so we want to give this substituent the most amount of space, meaning we want it to be as isolated as possible, definitely not wedging it in between a couple of halogens. So we're going to call this guy here our major product. Again, that is because we're giving our largest substituent the most amount of space. Now let's look at some examples of synthesis, like how would we actually synthesize a molecule starting with benzene and working our way to synthesize these molecules. Now this, these problems are actually a little bit trickier than they seem because you have to put these substituents onto the ring in the correct order, taking into consideration orthopara versus meta-directing. So, for example, when I'm looking at a reaction like this and I'm looking at these two substituents that are on the ring, they are p positioned para with respect to each other. I've got to keep that in mind. If I put the nitro group on the ring first, so if I started with the nitro group, let's just actually kind of sketch this out. If we started with benzene and then we put the nitro group on the ring first, and I'll fill those reagents in later, Nitro groups are meta directors, so then when we came along to put the bromine on, that nitro group would direct the bromine into the meta position, which is not the product that we're looking for. So that means we don't want to put the substituents on the ring in this order. We don't want to go nitro first, bromine second. We want to do the bromine first and the nitro second. When I'm looking at these types of products, I always want to think about what type of director are each one of these substituents. The nitro is a meta director. The bromine is an ortho para director. Since I want an ortho para, since I want a para relationship, that means that I want to start with an ortho para director so that this para director can put the substituents in the correct position. 
So I want to start with the bromine, and then once I get the bromine on there, I want to add the NO2. Now bromine is put in place with Br2, FeBr3, or Br2, ALC, ALBr3, and the nitro group is put into place using nitric acid, HNO3, with sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Let's look at another example, and let's try this one. Let's try doing it without, you know, guessing and checking. Looking at the substituents that we have, we have an alkyl group, with, which is an ortho para director. We have another alkyl group, which is also, also an ortho para director. And we have a nitro group, which is a meta director. Um, one of the notes that are that's included on here, a friedel crafts reaction, they're difficult for the ring to take uh, for the ring to do, and they can't be done on a benzene ring that has a deactivating substituent already in place. This nitro group is a deactivator, so um, putting alkyl groups on the ring needs to be done before you add any deactivating substituent. So that just means right off the bat, we know that we have to get the alkyl groups on the ring first. And then we can get the, once both of the alkyl groups are in place, we can put the, the nitro group. Um, so as far as like which order should we put these alkyl groups on the ring, uh, it doesn't really matter. Like we could put them on in any order that we want. So let's start with the little one first. CH3, CL, AL, CL3. Those are our friedel crafts reagents. We're going to do a second friedel crafts reaction to put the second alkyl group on the ring. Um, and this is going to be this guy with ALCL3. Normally with friedel crafts we have to worry about rearrangement, but neither one of these alkyl groups will rearrange. And then the last thing that we're going to do is nitration, HNO3, H2SO4. And this nitration reaction, um, will give us our final product. And we have one more of these that we can do. So we have in this last one, we have a, a carboxylic acid group. That's a partial, partial positive charge on the carbon atom, which makes this a meta director. We have an SO3H group, also partial positive on that sulfur, which makes it a meta director. Ooh, what do we do in this situation? This, if we put this substituent on first, then let's actually sketch this out. So if we start with the benzoic acid group, um, because that's a meta director, because of that carbon-oxygen double bond, then that will send the SO3H group into the meta position, which is not what we want. So let's try the other way around. Let's start with the SO3H group we start with the SO3H group, that's also a meta director. So that's going to put the carboxylic acid group in the meta position in uh, relative to the SO3H. That's also not what we want. So does that mean that this is an impossible reaction? There's actually a trick to this, a reaction that you probably haven't thought of for a while. If we start by putting an alkyl group on the benzene ring, so we'll do like a friedel crafts alkylation, and it doesn't matter what the alkyl group is, we could put any alkyl group on there, we can do a side chain oxidation reaction to convert that alkyl group into a benzoic acid. Um, so that would convert this into the COOH group. Perfect. Now we don't want to do it right away because what we want to do is use that alkyl group as an ortho para director, fuming sulfuric acid, is going to put that SO3H group into the correct spot. And once we get it into the correct spot, then we can do our side chain oxidation to convert that alkyl group into a benzoic acid using potassium permanganate. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what we do here. Some heat and I think a little bit of water. I might have these reagents a little bit wrong, but it's something in that ballpark.